away. And I was riding a pretty rank old horse, but I told the buck rude boss there, I said, I got to get gallop circles behind these cattle because there's going to be a hell of a wreck here and just a full <laughs> death. <laughs> and oh no, you got to go slow, go slow. Pretty quick he blew up and bucked down through there and scattered a few cattle. And the next time we shipped steers, Ellison come around and he sat down beside me at the dinner table. He said, tomorrow we're going to look away them steers. You ride that bridle horse of mine. He said, don't, if you ain't got nothing better to ride than them goddamn things. Don't like, show up. <laughs> don't show up. Get on that bridle horse. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that gave me a chance to ride a nice broke horse. How'd that feel? That felt pretty nice. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, now, Ray, how went to work for you on the 20 Well, he came right? to the TS, and, and uh, you came up with uh, those boys out of Bruno, and uh, Ray was a club-footed boy, and, but he could ride about anything, but he had a terrible temper and everything, and so he was working at TS, and then he came over there to rep actually. He didn't work for us, but he repped there, so he kind of worked the horse over, and I said, you, gotta, you, you should meet this man, this Tom Dorrance, he might help you. And they just got clicked together. And of course, Ray did a lot of great things for people and and, and went on then and became great. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Ray was a good cowboy. And he could, like I say, he rode horses that most of us had that he asked couldn't ride. But he had a lot of heart to him. And uh, just, well, he's just one of these guys that Tom Dorrance was, a, was actually a genius. And Ray was probably following him up near him. Europeans that a genius. They could do other things besides ride a horse. They could invent gates and they could do different things like that. But Tom wasn't a communicator, was he? Well, Tom was one of these people that could read a person as well as he could read a horse. And of course, he had the ability to be able to ride anything too. And so, so it was just kind of, uh, he kind of knew how to put two people, to, uh, people on a horse together. And that's what, where he had so much over most people. When you start helping somebody, you have to figure out what the person is too, which I, I could never figure, so I don't, don't try to help anybody. <laughs> I went to the cow, or this horse palace over here one time, and they would, Ray Hunt had a seminar, and he was in the barn with a little group of people showing talking horses. And Tom Dorrance was outside with a big group of people. And this lady said, you know, I can't get my horse to figure eight. Can you help me? Tom said, I don't know. And he got on that lady's horse and just rode him around there, rode him around there, and galloped him a little, and just circles. And pretty quick, he dropped his reins and was figure eight. And he came back, and that lady said, why won't he do that for me? He don't like you. That's all he told us. He? <laughs> he told us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he was quite frank. Was he? Yeah. 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 But he worked, uh, I was around in about 16 years, so I had a, a quick, big period. And, and my brother John, of course, was <clears throat> started lots more coats with him than I did. But the first time he came in with that idea of starting coats, he had about 40 head of horses in the ground. He put me on this little sorrow horse and I said, where do I go? He said, I'll open the gate. He opened the gate. A bunch of us just drift. So then he comes out and wrangles us and brings us back. That's back. <laughs> I thought he's trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> and so now there was a <clears throat> horse that come in this country and uh, well, I happen to have one because of you, that, that Colonel Pick breeding mm -hmm. from you started the that yep. yeah, I you, broke him. You yeah. brought, but that that guy that had the as the the uh, Fairly Ranch over there, mm -hmm. you you kind of started him. I worked for him. him. You worked for him right? for eight years. And then you broke the the Colonel Pick horses. Yeah, I broke stuff, him. Yeah. Right? And they became pretty famous horses. Yeah, in a lot of he was a pretty outstanding horse. <clears throat> was he? Yeah, mm -hmm. he was a hard horse to show though. <laughs> and I had him at the fraternity one year. And, want to go around on him. The next go around there's a mirror horse and then we left the ring on our feet. 
He reared up and I couldn't do anything with him. Really? Yeah, but he was that, but he was a stud, so. Yeah, was, yeah. Yeah. But, but his coat really came out. Yeah, well, you know, that horse I got here, he, <coughs> yeah. he turned out to be an yeah. unbelievable horse, you know, and because of you, that's how I ended up in the horse. Well, I'm just fortunate to be able to get a lot of horse. It really, to be a, to have a good horse, be a good horseman, you have to have good horses. Yeah. Right. Horses that want to work for you and stuff. Uh -huh. And, you know, there's a difference between being a, Good outside cowboy and a, and a showman, you know. A good outside cowboy can ride anything and get the job done. And most of the showmen, they're just in the arena, you know. They get, right. the, you know. But there's some of those that are good too. But I don't think today I shouldn't talk about them. I don't think. But but there isn't very many guys like Jim said that hell that even know a cow, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So when all those guys that drifted through on that wagon, I'm going to ask you the same question. Who do you think was the best cowboy that ever drifted? Well, you know, it's hard to say. There were so many good ones, Billy Kane and, and all of them, a lot of the Chapin boys and, and all of them. It's really hard to say if you said, you know, it would be taking something away from one to the other right. because everybody had. But, but there was just so many of those good boys came through with his brother and, 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 and your cousin. And I, incidentally, I, I was going to say I'm sorry to hear that he died. I didn't know that he died till the other day. Yeah, he. Yeah. yeah. But in those days, though, there was a lot of those when I came here in the '70s. There were a lot of those bedroll cowboys that just were went from one place to the other and rode them horses all the time, right? Well, there was, but we never. Uh, Ellison and, and most of those, we never put up with that. Claude Barto would never put up with that. Oh yeah. Yeah, Claude was quite an individual, I think, and and and. Yeah, he was, he was, he really was. I enjoyed being around Todd when I did. He, but he always liked to wrestle. And boy, that big guy grabbed me. I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> well, yeah, he was pretty big. But they, in those days, they, they, everything was hayed with teams, so they had a lot of workhorse and yeah. they did a lot of stuff with teams. So. <laughs> well, that's not how my boys got in rodeo. The Chapin boys were working for me, and when things started, they started contracting the hay and stuff the 25 and all the ranches there and so they had all those workhorses 150 or so I can't remember for sure so Harold came to me one day and asked me if they could build an arena to win it ground up some up out they'd get Marvin Meyer and somebody to come and buy them so I asked the rest of the family and they said well that's fine so they built an arena and, I mean and, and, and fixed a, a bucket shoot and they started bucking them out, and our son Mike was just a kid there, and then he'd watch him and come home and spur his mother's furniture. <laughs> 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 so that's where it started. I never, yeah. I never was, I never been able to shoot in my life. I never, I, I rode some and like that, and rode a lot of bucking horses, up, but they weren't in the shoot yeah. and, and everything like that. But, but the Herb, the Chapin boys, so they kind of followed up, and they were all good family, the Chapins were. And, the Ch Charlie, they all worked there for the company and, and everything. And so, but from watching that, and Mike decided he was going to be a rodeo cowboy, and I thought, oh, hell, this won't work. But by gosh, first year he went, he went to the finals. So then Joe came along and beat his brother, so that didn't go so very well. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> then, then Pete rode, but Pete never liked the rodeo. He ran run a college rodeo uh, at the finals, but he never right. he never went on. He always wanted to come home and work, and he was only one of the bunch that was any good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they were out here. But then they all It's nice of you to say that. <laughs> anyway, I think we've pretty well covered everything, unless Rodina would... Uh, do you think that your boys, uh, they all follow pretty much the livestock trail? Uh, outside of Tom oh, Cooney, yeah. who's always blue. Yes, uh, he is. Uh -huh. Do you think their, their kids will follow the same trail in the livestock business or no? Well, well it continues. <laughs> the livestock business continues. Right. They certainly will. So there'll, they be, a, there'll be a line of marbles down the road there still, huh? All the great grandchildren. And yeah. And your boy now, he lives back east, right, Tom? He lives in Kentucky. <laughs> in Kentucky. Works for Delta Airlines. Still works for the same on. And he's got a boy, right? He's got a boy, and that boy, is, when he was able to come and stay with me through the summers, why, he would give his left arm to 
stay here a year around, yeah, boy. He right. wanted to be a cop. Oh. Nice young man, I met him. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a super well, I think it's great. I think uh, we pretty well covered a, a, a small part of it. Uh, I really appreciate you guys doing this. It's really nice of you to do this. And you're great friends, and we've had a lot of fun in our lifetime, all of us. And, I hope that this will uh, be good for your family and it'll be good for people that watch it because it's part of history here that we're talking about, Nevada history. And uh, I think a lot of this is getting lost. Well, he, you know, the thing that I wanted to bring up, he, he me do something wrong. He'd come down and Jim was going to do it. <laughs> and next time you that comes up, you better do it that way. <laughs> yeah, I go along and well, you know, I had a lot of hand-me-down clothes for my brothers to get, you know, my family doing all about. And he'd make, he'd make me get mad at me. <laughs> he said, can't you get even some decent clothes? He said, your Rihanna's dragging. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> it might take Johnny 30 minutes to get his horse saddled. Yeah. He'd coil up his rope, just, he'd take his rope off his saddle every time he got off. Coil it up just right. Yeah. Coil up the cartridge just right. Everything had to be perfect, you know. Yeah. But he was the old time Spanish. Yeah, he sure was. Huh. You worked for Elmer Nunes, too, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, he was in it. And Lola was really a character. Yeah, Lola no, was me, a pretty good old guy. I got a Tess, did you work with Tess? I thought that did. When he rep? Yeah. Yeah, he was there. Right? Could you I? know, it was really, really fun, though, to watch Lolo and Tez together yeah. at a Brandon. Yeah. And them two guys would outdo the other one. These guys think they can rope today. These kids go down the rodeo trail. Them old-time Mexican boys, they, they'd reach out there, <laughs> the 60, 75-foot riata, and they'd be something dangling on the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was really, it was, that was really sad. I used to get... Sure enjoy being around them. Yeah, yeah. it was it was fun guys. Yeah, they sure were. Yeah. Yeah, oh well, I had a, a Viado with a dog not not in it. And he'd catch something in his hand. I'd say, How do you get there? I said, jump over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just thinking about your grandkids or your great grandkids or whatever, what was the best part of I mean, what was the best part of life here? living in the cow business for you guys what what, what did you like the most about uh, uh, being in the cow business yeah and the horse the freedom the freedom of uh, and doing what you want you know uh i never was very smart and i'm gonna be very frank about it but i've lived the best life anybody could ever live i did you know have the uh, i didn't get much education only the eighth grade and stuff but I went, it's just been a great life. And I, without the livestock industry and the people in it, they're the ones that help you. And that's what was, used to be so great without the fences. Everybody neighbored so good. And they talk about fences make neighbors. I can't see it. Okay. No, no. The, the best thing about ranching was the people that you associated with. Yeah, right. You know, and they was guys that could show horses, they had guys that could rope good and do everything, but upstairs they was all thinking the same thing, hard work and yeah. and getting the job done. Yeah. And that's what we're getting back to, what you just said is right. They don't know how to work today and they don't want to work. Or it seems to me, I don't mean everybody, there's exceptions. But as a whole, you know, it's just like these uh, these ranches have a hard time getting people unless it's Mexicans. You know, there's so many. You know, but I don't know about the Spanish ranch anymore. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't. They, with my job, I see pretty near every ranch in Elko County in the fall as a brand inspector. And some of the help you see would have probably starved to death when Tom was growing up. I was growing up. <laughs> they wouldn't would not have made it on a ranch. No. They don't want to work and they, they don't they do nothing for the 
for the industry at all. Do you have the same problem in Arizona? <laughs> yes, sir. Same problem with the kids. I mean, the only people that know how to work hard are 50 or over. 